Hi guys, this is Action DJ from Action Studio, and today we are going to be starting a fresh new series for projection mapping tutorials. We're going to be learning the fundamentals, the tips, and the tricks of the process. For this, we are going to be using Resolu Marina software, and the reason why I would do that is because it not only allows me to do projection mapping, but it's also one of the greatest VJing softwares. So I don't have to VJ uh, or mix my videos using a different software, then send it on a different software for projection mapping. Since Arena came out, the projection mapping uh, process is built in, which is great. Uh, saves on system resources and makes the process a lot more easier. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to fire up Resolu Marina. Uh, something to be noted is that I already have my La projector connected to my laptop the the screen the the camera recording that you are seeing is of a cube that I created out of paper um, and uh, I have done nothing but just made a cube put a camera projector connected to my laptop and that's it nothing else uh, this is how a default uh, Resolu Arena screen looks like uh, when you fire up a new composition and uh, so we're gonna do some things which are required which I do every time because it makes not only the process easier uh, but is also a good thing like for example I change the resolution of my composition to match the resolution of my projector so there's no distortion there's no pixel bending there's no stretching uh, uh, or squeezing going on so simply go to this setting option uh, over here and one of the great things about Resolum is that it automatically detects your devices, your outputs, and shows you the native resolution. So right now, if you see here, it says Display 2, which is my projector. Display 1 is my LCD screen of my laptop. It has 1920-1200 resolution. This guy has 1024768, which I'm going to select. You can change the name and description if you want. Let's just call it Tutorial and apply boom now it jumps from the composition layer to uh, composition tab to the layer tab uh, so what I'm also going to do and this is not required but this is something that comes in handy to me a lot I'm gonna go to three panel uh, setups what I did was view property panel layout three panel setup now I have three different panels one two three. First one is for composition second one is for layer and third one is for clip and then you have your browser over here, file, composition, effect, and source browser. Um, the reason why I do the three panel layout is because now it allows me to change C and adjust the parameters of each separately and I don't have to juggle between tabs. Uh, I, I can see whatever is in front of me straight away. Uh, so it's, it's very useful going forward. I recommend you do it. Um, also, uh, just a few things about Resolu Marina if you already don't know much about the software. Uh, these are your layers, uh, your clip layers. Um, you can have a lot of videos in each. I wouldn't recommend going too many. Um, so, seven, eight, six, uh, or you know, as much as your resolution allows you to see in one go is good enough. Um, these are your layer names over here. One, two, three, you can change them. Every time you click on a layer, all the parameters are displayed over here. So if I click on layer 1, you will see that the opacity is jumping to 1. Layer 2 is 50. Um, so you can obviously set them according to how you want it. But whatever you change here, uh, you will see over here is also changing. What is this? This is A is audio, AV is audio visual, and V is only video. So this allows you to also work with the video if you wanna fade this one out completely, you can do that. If you wanna fade the audio, uh, you can do that. Um, you can also uh, go to settings and actually remove uh, audio. Uh, so only the video tab is uh, available. Um, I would not get into that because that's purely Resolu Marina the VJing part and we might do that in future episodes this one is all about getting started with projection mapping okay um, so let's start with putting some media onto the clear uh, onto the layers one thing about the media I would like to mention is Resolume is slightly picky when it comes to what kind of media does it allow uh, and what it doesn't allow I wish it would allow things like images like GIF images because I have like 
300, 500 GIF images, which are so good, and they have the small animations, which is brilliant, but it doesn't allow. So I'll have to convert them at some point from GIF to MOVs. It uh, rocks MOVs, um, and it has a special codec uh, available on its website. I think it's called HAP. I'm um, not too sure, uh, but I will put the link in, so read up on that. That allows you to encode your MOV files or your movie files in such a way that they use the graphics uh, resources, the graphic cards, and not hog on your system resources, which is the CPU. And that is pretty awesome because then um, you are not crashing, your system uh, is not peaking up on its uh, resource usage. So just uh, let's just put in some um, media uh, onto these clips right here and today uh, we're just going to be mapping the cube that you see in the frame um, we're just gonna be mapping I guess the left and right screen um, of uh, the cube okay I have I think I put this one twice I'll just look at four maybe okay four perfect um, so, um, and as you can see over here, the clip details are mentioned when I'm clicking on the clip. Uh, something about Resolume, uh, if you click on the this part of the thumbnail, not the main thumbnail, but just the bottom, then it previews the video. Why are you not able to see it? Because I have minimized mine. But if yours is minimized, then just click on this arrow and it will open up. And if you click on this, then you are you will be able to see the preview, which is good because sometimes you want to see what's going to happen before you launch the video by clicking on the video, and now it's on the output. Uh, so that was just something you guys should know. I'm going to minimize this again. Um, I'm going to click on any one of the videos and go to. Okay, most of you might go to mapping. Uh, that's not where you got to go because mapping uh, is for key, MIDI, and OSC mapping for external. Uh, hardware that you would want to use uh, to fire your clips etc which we will cover in a future episode but for now uh, we will go to output and we're gonna go to advanced uh, you can use shortcuts if you are comfortable with that but uh, by clicking on advanced it'll do the same thing now since I have my projector connected you will see in the camera view right now it's it took the output and started displaying the whole thing over there if you for whatever reason do not have your projector connected you would see something like this um, that it will just take your LCD screens output and start uh, displaying over there so what you can do in that case is either click on no display or if you have your projector connected and for some reason it still shows the full screen over here on your LCD then you can click on the right display and it will start showing over there now this advanced screen setup is your main screen of projection mapping. Um, one of the things that I would like to say in the beginning before I get started is remember to save and close. Don't just use this red arrow. Nothing will get saved and all your mapping will go away. I have that I have done that a few times in the beginning and seriously guys, it's it's frustrating. So make sure you save and close when you are good and happy with your mapping and uh, you're satisfied don't cancel and don't press the red button save and close okay now on the left hand side we have screen and slice a screen uh, is um, it, you there will be a time when you would want to use multiple projectors the screen option allows you to do that it allows you to select multiple projectors um, select each display like say if I have screen 1 here I will select the right uh, projector screen 2 the, and you know so and so on and then within each screen you can have slices which is also known as surfaces uh, that will allow you to map your content um, going down you will see screen slice mask and crop and an add option which means whenever you click on one of these it will add that so if I click on slice right now it added a new slice for me I want to delete um, so that's that on the left top side you'll see input selection and output transformation now this is quite crucial input selection is what allows you to select your content and the part of the content you would like to be projected out whereas output transformation allows you to map that bit of content that you have selected in the input selection I hope I'm making sense so for example uh, let me just change the video first uh, to 
second I'm just gonna disable this one and just put this one and I'm gonna increase the opacity here because you remember we turned it down I'm gonna actually turn all of them up 100% okay so um, I'm gonna come to input selection now you see this uh, over here and if I let's say uh, to this slice if I take this point and if I squeeze it and make it this small or let's say make it a square ish so you will see that in my output I am only seeing that much and not the whole video and this is quite a handy tool because what you can do sometimes is you can have multiple animations custom animations on one video you don't have to have separate videos so for example you can use uh, uh, After Effects or something and you can have a circle animating in different ways with outlines without outlines fade and fade out and you know different effects on the same video and for each slice whenever you want to give a different effect you can just select that part in your video you don't have to select the whole video every time by selecting that part uh, you are isolating that content and in output transformation you can then use the same points uh, to sort of uh, map it you know by moving them around to your surface um, you can also add or uh, edit uh, multiple points like more than four points that you see right now but that's for another video that's for another time uh, so we're just going to start with mapping this one to the left side of the cube I'm just gonna move I'm just gonna first make it smaller because I know it needs to be smaller for the size and now I'm gonna try and connect and bring it to the sides by just looking at it and by just moving them around you can obviously use your arrow keys once you have your points selected if you want to be very precise uh, for the sake of this tutorial I'm not gonna be very finicky about if it's overlapping the edges but I think it's pretty close right now um, so that's uh, the left part done it's so easy so straightforward uh, I'm gonna now right click on my slice within uh, and right now just something to notice I'm still in output transformation so I'm gonna click on duplicate and now I'm gonna move but wait a second I can't move it and that's because right now I'm still in edit point mode now to move this slice or any slice uh, as a whole you can either click on transformation uh, transform uh, option over here and then this bounding box uh, will appear and then you can move it around or by being in the edit points option only you can just simply click on command or control key and this will appear temporarily and you can again hold it and move it around so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna bring it over here leave it and now move the points again and again I have to I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not actually able to see the cube because my laptop is right in front of my camera. So I'm just going to see from the small screen. Let's see, as close as I can come to having it. There you go. That looks pretty cool. So, there you go. And uh, I have now successfully mapped two of the surfaces of my cube. And it was that easy. Uh, in input selection you can always go and you can select any of the slices and move them around so for example if you want one uh, to go up and the other to go down all I would have to do is uh, select one of them and put them here so now one's going down one's going up that's pretty cool I'm just gonna make this slightly smaller so it looks similar perfect small neon tubes so uh, as you saw the process is quite straightforward it's when you get into more complex uh, surfaces and you want to do something extraordinary is when it gets complicated uh, I will try and cover as much as with you the fundamentals the trade craft uh, so to say uh, of projection mapping and uh, you're gonna have fun going forward guys uh, so that's uh, pretty much the end of episode one there's a lot more to cover in this advanced screen setup itself uh, which we will do in uh, the next episode uh, remember the save and close option do not forget that I'm gonna click on that it's still happening if I would have clicked actually on the X then it would have just disappeared instantly so don't do that 
thank you so much uh, for watching this. Uh, stay. Um, I think I would be uploading episodes uh, once a week, uh, possibly. If I could do it any sooner, I would. Uh, not every episode would be in continuation because sometimes it could be that I come across something pretty cool and I want to share. I will make a video and I will upload it. So check that out. Uh, thank you so much again and I uh, hope you guys have a good time.